Peace Corps. It's an American-based international aid organization that um, doesn't supply um, money. We don't build monuments. It's a program that sends Americans all over the world for about two years. I remember saying anyone who joins Peace Corps doesn't have a clue what they're signing up for. Because <laughs> if you did, you'd never do it. I joined Peace Corps because um, the first thing is this, I want all right, let's try this again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to Peace Corps Connect. As we would say in Peace Corps China, Zhao Sheng Hao. Let's try that again. Zhao Sheng Hao. That means good morning. If you say that um, to your Chinese friends, they will be incredibly impressed with your Chinese. So, the last time that I was on stage in front of a room of this many people, I was playing John Denver's Country Roads for about a thousand uh, Chinese students and professors. You know, achieving the second goal of Peace Corps. <laughs> so, I'm on stage playing this song, and after about a minute, a little girl runs up on stage and tries to give me a bouquet of flowers. She was adorable. Um, I look down, I'm playing the guitar, I can't take the flowers from her, so she just stands there. <laughs> um, and after a while, she started getting a little nervous, like, why isn't this Lao Wai taking my flowers? So I, I wanted to ease her discomfort. I reach out, I grab the flowers. How do you play the guitar with a bouquet of flowers in your hand? So here I am thrashing my guitar with a bouquet of flowers. I, I truly felt like a rock star in that moment. Um, and she scampers off stage, happy to be away from this strange singing alien. And I thought, this is something that could only happen in the Peace Corps. Peace Corps. You came here with not somebody that you served with. I want you to tell them a quick story. Here are the things I want you to tell them. Who you are where you served, and one memorable moment from your service. Now, we only have a couple of minutes to do that. So you're going to tell them who you are, where you served, and one memorable thing about your service. Do you think you can do that? All right, go. Hi. Hi. I don't know you. I didn't serve with you. May I talk with you, Liz? Sure, yes. I was going to include somebody who's in your room. Yes, let's talk. Are you... Do, may I film at the same time? Sure. <laughs> sort of fun it was because here's what we're doing. I will film it will go on uh, YouTube, maybe on the website or something. Okay. And pieces. Okay, fire away, Liz. Tell me about yourself. Hi, I'm Liz. Uh, I served in Morocco in 1993 to 90. Should I talk to you or 1993 to 95. Uh, one memorable experience from my service. Let's see, I remember when I first moved to my site and I couldn't speak Arabic at all and I was living in a little village and um, everything was very tense and scary and the whole village was in my room, about 30 people in my tiny little room and they were all staring at me to do something and I didn't know what to do so I found a deck of cards in my bag that I hadn't unpacked yet and I started doing magic tricks for them and I had the whole room screaming with excitement and, and fear and delight and it broke the ice for my Peace Corps service. That's that is so cool! These are magic tricks. Here, you pointed at me, it's still going. Okay. So, my name is Bill Lewis. Hi, Bill. I was in Kenya 74 through 76. Okay. And if you know where Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia are. I do. When Very they well. where all three come together. Yes. That's me. Oh, okay. Like the three corners. The three corners. Okay. At one time, yeah. I was sitting in with a couple of the other teachers, yeah. and they were teaching me Somali. Somali. And okay. I was... I was working on this, and they had it down. They, this is how we men greet each other. Yes. And at that point, a workman knocked on the door, came in, and they all turned to me, and I tried it, and he laughed, and we were all pounded high fives. And then a little while later, the headmaster's wife came in, and they just about tackled me. <laughs> Apparently, fuck your father. It's a perfectly acceptable greeting among men. Yeah. But, but yeah. <laughs> that is a great story. So, I loved it. I had a great time. That's great. Woo, thank you.
All right. Okay, so I was a little bit earlier. We gotta break it up, guys. Break it up. We could be here all day telling these stories. In fact, we will be here all day telling these stories. I have some pictures. And oh, the stories we will tell. Um, I know you guys are all practiced and polished storytellers, um, but one of the focuses of Peace Corps Connect this year is in improving ways that you can tell your stories. She is the current president of the Northern California Peace Corps Association, NorCal, um, and she is a former and beloved Peace Corps staff member um, <laughs> in many, many different roles. <laughs> beloved by all. Sorry, yes. I think it's yeah, see, we have a testimonial here already. Oh, yeah, I'm yes. And she's currently the Chief of Operations for the amazing organization's Room to Read. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Bowden. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for those of you who have traveled long and far to get here, welcome to Berkeley, welcome to Northern California, welcome to the East Bay. We have dialed up some really nice weather for you all here. It's actually um, it's sunny and a little bit warm. So, uh, so we did that specially for anybody coming from the East Coast who may have thought you know, that, that it was going to be summer here too. Uh, I, am, I am so thrilled, though, to be, um, to be part of this. Um, I probably shouldn't ask this question, but raise your hand if this is your first NPCA uh, annual meeting. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Good. That is, that is awesome. So it is mine too. So I am really, really excited to come to my first meeting here. And, um, and hopefully, you know, thanks to all of the great support from uh, Peace Corps headquarters and from NPCA and our sort of bumbling around is, you know, with the NorCal folks. Um, uh, RPCD Guatemala, 1988 to 1991, and my friend, Glenn Bloomhorse. Yeah. Lively and exciting. I just want to say thank you for coming. Uh, welcome to all of you for being here at Peace Corps Connect 2015 in Berkeley. We have probably around 500 people registered to participate, the largest yet of this type of conference. Volunteer who served in Kenya from 1968 to 1970, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Barclay. Welcome to everyone. My task is actually to call the meeting to order, and that seems like kind of a deflating thing to do after you have the energy level of BJ and Lynn and Glenn. Uh, but this is, uh, for the next uh, 45 minutes or so, uh, our annual general membership meeting. Uh, and we do this as the uh, sort of kickoff event with each Peace Corps Connect conference. As you know, this is our fourth. Uh, the first one being in Minneapolis, the second in Boston, the third in Nashville. And like everyone else here, I'm just delighted that we're holding this event here on the Berkeley campus. Good morning. Good morning. Like many of you, I wear several hats in this organization. And for one of the recent hats, I think I need a, one of those hard hats that construction workers use because the bylaws are the basics of our organization and uh, that's, that's what we are all standing on and so it is a basic construction. And doing this, we were bringing things up to date. They've been last amended in uh, 2007. Things changed in that time. And sometimes the changes kind of show and you need to smooth it out, bring things up to date. So I'll just mention a couple of things that are new. First off, we um, updated the purposes of NPCA. And so now what we have listed is to provide an organizational framework for the Peace Corps community, to be an alumni network for returning Peace Corps volunteers, to maintain a close partnership with the Peace Corps, to collaborate with the Peace Corps, to make the transitions after Peace Corps service seamless, to support and encourage Peace Corps volunteers in sharing their knowledge and understanding of the world after their service, 
to support, to foster and support NPCA affiliate groups and extend the network of such groups, to facilitate ongoing service on the Global Peace Corps community, and to advocate for and support the Peace Corps. So that, that's where we're heading. The other thing you will notice, a lot of this construction work you don't see, but here's another thing that's on the surface. You'll notice uh, Tony called this not the annual general meeting, but the annual general membership meeting. And that's part of our new focus on membership. A strategic plan that was uh, a major effort of the board and the staff during 2014 took shape, was formally endorsed by the board, uh, and I think provides very, very clear directional guidance for the initiatives of the NPCA. So a lot of what Glenn has to say will be about how, in the last year, we've been bringing parts of the strategic plan to life, some of the new initiatives that it fosters, uh, and the very promising future for the organization that's heart and soul of the plan. Here you are, Glenn. So here we go. Looking back on the last year, uh, some things that we've been uh, seeing in our community that involve all of you in one way or another. As BJ mentioned early on, there's a partnership in the works here, a partnership that is working together. And that's reflected in this conference, that's reflected in the Memorandum of, Under of Understanding that was signed last year with the Peace Corps, but it's also reflected in the agreements and the affiliation that we have with the local chapters, the local groups around the country and around the world. This conference is a good example of that. We have the National Peace Corps Association in partnership with NorCal and in partnership with the Peace Corps Agency putting this conference on for you. I'd like to recognize the National Peace Corps Association board directors, current board directors and incoming board directors, if you would please stand and be recognized. to look at the last year's board of directors and the current board of directors. Please rise to your hand. We're working on this initiative with the Peace Corps, Employers of National Service. How many of you heard of Employers of National Service? How many of you are an employer of National Service? <laughs> We've got about four, or five, maybe six. Peace Corps is an employer of National Service. NPCA is an employer of national service. Here in California, we have several employers of national service. What is an employer of national service? This is an employer that commits in a variety of ways to hiring returned Peace Corps volunteers, amongst others, including AmeriCorps alums and other alums. But those who have served in these capacities, in Peace Corps in particular, they have committed to, first of all, making sure that's clear in their announcements about their positions that they're offering, uh, indicating on their applications that the individual has served in a service uh, capacity in one of the organizations. And then, in many cases, they are taking that a step further by giving some type of objective, preferential treatment to return Peace Corps volunteers. We've also found that RPCVs can engage in providing technical assistance to projects such as the Sierra Madre Water Project in Mexico that is getting under right now. We're going to mobilize return Peace Corps volunteers under this agreement with them to provide more opportunities for them to serve short-term on assignments in Mexico. We also work with RPCB entrepreneurs to help promote their market uh, products so that they can be successful in scaling up and getting their product, building their market, if you will, in the building their marketplace with their products. Madagascar's chocolate, anybody had that chocolate? Oh, yeah. Good stuff, probably. You have heard from it, about it, maybe from the NPCA through our cause-related marketing. We, we promote that product on behalf of the RPC so they can build their marketplace for selling that. Very successful year for Madacas and for a number of other RPCV-led and entrepreneurship uh, endeavors that we have promoted. We help get you started. We help launch your initiatives that you want to get underway. And we're going to be building on this down the road. Thanks to a very generous donation from one of our Shire Circle members, we have a grant fund of $10,000 in small grants up to $500 to support education, third goal in particular. So groups and individuals, if you have a third goal event such as a film fest 
or a, an event, a fair, or something that you'd like to support, you can apply to that grant fund to support that, that initiative. This is made possible, like I said, by somebody who really feels strongly about education, about their goal, and we want simply to make sure that you know you can capitalize on this. In the last year, I think we've been around 2,000, 2,500 in grants uh, for this program alone. You'll hear more about this later, but we have partnerships with universities and colleges where MPCA members can receive very generous scholarships to attend graduate programs at these schools. Uh, this last year, since the last annual meeting, the MPCA has facilitated those scholarships into the amount of $80,000. Don't think it's just Gwen and Jonathan up there going to Capitol Hill and talking about the Peace Corps with Carrie or something like that. It's really all about you and you getting involved in advocacy, particularly at the local level in your districts. What happened? The president this year presented a budget for $410 million, which is the highest budget that has been presented to date. Congress generally partially. <laughs> Congress can do with that what they want. They sometimes tend to ignore it, but at least it is a benchmark in terms of where we'd like to see the budget going up, not stagnant and not going down, of course. It's very important that you keep letting your members of Congress know about the Peace Corps, know about the dividends of the Peace Corps, and letting them know how important it is to give it adequate funding. It's a drop in the bucket, if you will. In the, in the scheme of things, in the terms of the federal budget. We're hoping that the Congress will approve a, a robust budget for the Peace Corps in 2016. We're working on that right now. We want you to be a part of it. There's district meetings in September. We'll, around the clock, around the year, we're working on advocacy for federal appropriations. NBCA, through you, also advocates for legislation that is important to the Peace Corps, helping make the Peace Corps better. We saw this in particular last year, two years of aggressive advocacy for the Peace Corps Equity Act. If you were a female volunteer in the Peace Corps, you were the only member of a service organization that was not included in health coverage that was extended to every other person who served as a volunteer or staff, including Peace Corps staff, in those cases where you may have been raped and you became pregnant and needed the services that you felt that you needed. This is simply a fix that makes it equitable with those other places of national service where the same health coverage is extended to all others. We won't be able to do anything without working closely with the Peace Corps Agency. This is the most important partnership that we have. We are principal partners, as Terry would say. We are each other's most important partner. So we're going to be working together, and we're glad to see that happening. This page doesn't capture all the partnerships that we have. We have more in the works, and we have more that we're expecting to sign here at this conference even as part of our events. <clears throat> and it's a collective effort on the part of the communities. There's only five paid staff up in, in Nashville, in Washington, D.C. All right, thank you, Stacy. Good to see you. All right, Stacy. <laughs> and we have gone through a process of looking at our next step travel program in a way that we can support our vision and mission of our organization and that of the Peace Corps and the NPCA community. And one of the ways that we feel that we can offer a member benefit and a program to you is by taking you to places and what you can see in the public spaces of Washington. And here's an opportunity to fill that gap and fill it in what we hope will be a beautiful, inspiring design. And then we'll have the task. Uh, once we have a selected design, we have a construction budget. Uh, of getting the word out and, and raising funds to build it. How much focus on you from that area? DJ? Um, I really don't work in programming um, at Peace Corps, but I think that Peace Corps has made a, a large shift to focus on the environmental sector. And I think that the, the concept of climate change is one element of the greater environmental um, portfolio that, that Peace Corps is looking at. Um, when we're working in communities, we're working with communities to assist them in developing sustainable practices, especially around cooking. That's been a huge, both in a cross-cutting theme, because cooking a lot of times involves uh, the gathering of firewood or kind of the uh, a non-sustainable um, method of, of gathering and cooking. So we've been focusing on that, and of course that's cross-cutting between environmental and food security issues. Um, we have a lot of other Peace Corps staff here that might actually speak more intelligently about Peace Corps' efforts around um, climate change. 
Or that might be a question we'll have to save for another session. Hi, I'm the, uh, live with the NorCal board. Um, in, the, oh, hi. in the tables um, next to the NorCal table is somebody who's working on the uh, climate change. I don't know if you guys um, all signed up, but there is a carbon offset and um, there's an effort being run uh, by the table, one of the people at the table's there. So go and take a look there. Um, there's both short term and long term, both uh, information and our options to help. So um, thanks for your question, and please uh, do what you can to offset your carbon offset. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Yes. I'd just like to. Here we go. It's too late for the 50 50, but I would like to propose that the organization work towards having another Peace Corps commemorative stamp. It's been a long time since we had one. I know it takes about five years, but it's hmm. time for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Len, are we ready to move? Okay. Thank you all very much. I'd like to ask for a motion to declare the meeting has been closed. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we're just very pleased that Elizabeth learned about it about a month ago, was it? Less than two months. <laughs> and, and she learned about it from the NPCA website and immediately wow. uh, called my colleagues and said, Are there still any available? Is it still admissions still open? And she got her application in very quickly. <laughs> It was reviewed very quickly, she was interviewed, and a decision was made very quickly. Uh, so Elizabeth, do you have a few I do. Thank you so much, Dr. Grabnik. It's such a great honor to be the first recipient of this new scholarship. It's such a pleasure to be here with all of you today. I'm an RPCB Ecuador, 2013, uh, finished in 2013. And these two great institutions. I hope that their collaboration is long-lasting and fruitful so that other RPCBs can benefit from this amazing scholarship. Like many RPCBs, I'm dedicated to working to change the lives of people around the globe. And in my case, an MBA, particular, particularly an IDER MBA with an international focus, gives me the credential and the training and the network. So I have a couple of minutes and I've got three things that I would like to talk with you about. One is explain a little bit what this IBER MBA program is in the hopes that some of you will tell maybe your children, uh, <laughs> uh, my child. Uh, and, and secondly, to tell you why we worked over this past year to develop a strategic partnership with the NBCA, why we thought this was important to do. And then thirdly, very briefly, to, to sketch for you a little bit about how my Peace Corps experience uh, in an earlier lifetime uh, has led me to push for this strategic partnership with uh, USC and, and the uh, NBCA. Uh, all again with them in the mind that you're going to broadcast or the eldest son or daughter of an Asian business family, so that our faculty can start to learn something about doing business in Asia. And, and over time, we built this up. Uh, I, I became the second director from 1982 to 1994. And, and, um, and then I got called to work in the central government of the university and I was the inaugural vice provost for globalization and trying to get more schools in the university to think about Asia and to develop ties. Um, so the, the beauty of this program is that the people are mid-career. So on average, 35 years old, ranging from about 29 to 45. So they come into the classroom with huge amounts of experience. And they learn from each other as much as they learn from the faculty. And then they go out in the world and they build these networks with the companies and the individuals. And it's a lifetime network. So second point, why did I want to create a strategic partnership with the NPCA? Because I wanted to get Americans who have deep cultural understanding of different parts of the world to get into the business world. And it could be into private sector business, it could be into public sector, it could be into NGOs. 
but I wanted to bring Americans into the program with deep knowledge. And without the scholarship program, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's a very expensive program, and we need the scholarship. So I raised some money, and we have some scholarships. And so it's a long-term commitment. We hope it's right now it's a three-year commitment, but I hope to renew this and renew this, and my successors will continue to renew it. And that will happen as long as we recruit great RPCVs who add to the classroom and then who add to the alumni uh, development, the alumni networks. Uh, thirdly and last, how did my Peace Corps experience shape all this? Uh, after I finished as an agricultural rural development uh, volunteer in Malaysia, I said, I want to become a world banker. So I saw these World Bank guys driving around in these jeeps and <laughs> doing these big irrigation projects and affecting hundreds of thousands of people, for better or for worse, the way the projects were done. And I said, well, okay, to do that, what do I need to do? I need a master's degree in economics and economic development to even get an application in the door. And so a couple of years later, when I'd saved some money, after being a school teacher for a while, uh, I ended up going to USC because they had some economic development specialists there. And, and I, I wanted to get out in one year and go, go work for the bank. But one of my professors, Jeffrey Nugent, said to me, uh, Mr. Drummond, you should apply for a PhD scholarship. And I said, Professor Nugent, I don't want a PhD. I don't want to live in the university. I want to go out there and do things. You know? He said, yes, but you should apply. And I said, why? He said, because you think differently. Something about your Peace Corps experience makes you think differently than the other graduate students. Well, the, 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 the short response is, Great surprise, six months later I learned that I got a three-year full tuition scholarship plus $300 a month. Wow. You know, Peace Corps volunteer, $300 a month. <laughs> I can go play golf once in a while. <laughs> and, and then that just shaped things. I ended up joining the business school faculty and then I ended up, uh, because of my Asia experience, being invited to run this special international MBA program. And then because of that, experience, got invited to be the vice provost, and so on and so forth. And, and last year, there was some turnover in the directorship of the Ivory MBA program, and the dean said to me, Did, why don't you stop doing what you're doing over there and come back and be the, the, the director again? And I've been an advisor, and, and I've raised a lot of money for the program, and so I said, after consultating with my wife a little bit, um, because of the travel, I said, I'll do it again. And one of the first things I wanted to do was to start this partnership. And, and so we've done that. Uh, again, the, the, the Peace Corps is a transformative experience for all of us. The Ivor MBA program is a transformative experience also. Please, uh, we, we, we have a table somewhere, and my colleague uh, Pankaj, would you stand on that, please? My, co my colleague Pankaj Bouchard. And day at iBear is still a lot better than my best day at work. <laughs> That's the truth. I, I am, it's where I'm still in my second term and I'm working very hard, but I am really happy to be here. And I think that a lot of people in my class feel the same way. I am exiting my former life, yeah. That's quite a dramatic way to put it. So, if you began your Peace Corps service in 1961, please stand up and be recognized. Those are our Peace Corps pioneers. All right. So now, if you served from 1962 to 1965, any time in that time frame, please stand up. Wow. 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 All right, thank you. And the next group I'd like to see, anybody who served from 1965 to 1970, 
in that time for you. Please stand up. Thank you. All right. Now let's look at 1970 to 1975. Please stand up. To 1985. Excellent, thank you. 1985 to 1995. Thank you so much. 1990 to 1995. All right, 1995 to 2000. Thank you. From 2000 to 2005. Two thousand five to two thousand ten. Thank you so much. All right, so now let's get two thousand ten to two thousand thirteen. Any of you guys folks out here? Anybody who served in the last year, who just got back from service, 2013. They write letters, they keep journals, they send emails, and they blog. 22 Peace Corps volunteers were there to build a one-room building. During the week, we got the foundation and the columns poured in 2,000 of the necessary 3,000 bricks made and some walls built. There are many things that are starting to seem perfectly normal after just a few weeks in Tonga. Immediately, the girl convulsed and screamed. I felt a coward for standing there and a coward for wanting to leave, but more a coward for watching this. You also meet several whose lives continue to be influenced by their Peace Corps experiences.